everybody. This is Zachary Beach, smartrealestatecoach.com, and welcome to another Deal Structure Sunday. Today, I have with me Nathan uh, out of Washington. We also do deals in Oregon as well, Washington State, um, and, they, and uh, he is a immersion member uh, of our community. So welcome, Nathan. Thank you. Happy to be here. Nathan, I wanted to have you on because uh, this is your first deal that you ended up closing out, which this is a huge milestone. I know we've been through uh, a lot here over, say, the last year that we've been working on. So let's dive into let's dive into this deal. So if you could, why don't you give me uh, the source? Yeah. So this was a FISBO listing that we reached out to on our Slack broadcast to connect and start conversations with. So. Awesome. Okay. For sale by owner. And uh, what type of deal are we talking about here? Uh, and a sign out nail. Perfect. All right. And what was the uh, purchase price that you agreed on with the seller uh, for this deal? Yeah. So she was looking at 569.9 on the property. Awesome. And because it's an AO, um, what was the length of term that you ended up agreeing with the seller on? Yeah, we agreed on um, 24 months. So any point on or before the 24 months is what we had agreed to. Awesome. Yeah, and again, the, the 24 months is more the formality. And you know, honestly, you you wanted to agree upon a purchase price to the seller, get a, them a minimum monthly payment. That way we could then bring it to market. Found a buyer. I'm guessing the buyer is going to be able to qualify in the 24 months, and that's how we came up with that number. Correct. Cool. What did uh, what did you end up selling the property for? Yeah, so we went to market at 599.9, so 30 30,000 dollars more. Awesome. Okay, so I had a nice 30,000 dollar bump. Um, and how did you how did you come to arrive at that's what you think the property should sell at? We just threw our magic wand around and figured it out. Well, we just did a little bit of digging and we, we bumped it up uh, appropriately. So, Yeah, did, did some additional calculations according to the market. We looked at it and said, hey, if somebody were to buy it today, um, here's a number. If somebody were needing our rent-to-own program um, based on appreciation of the market, $5.99. Uh, in all honesty, that's not even a huge number, uh, the $30,000 appreciation. So. That's, um, that's great. Let's, uh, let's fast forward here. Um, it took us a while to get a buyer. Um, just so everybody knows, I think this is real important. Uh, we'll dive into the nuances in, in over time, but just so, just so everybody knows, like every single deal doesn't happen overnight. Things like, uh, sometimes it takes a lot of time. How long did it take you from the time on which you took the property under contract until the time you were able to sell it? Yeah, so we, we took this property under contract in mid-March, and then we uh, the buyer moved in on August 1st. So awesome. it took about, what, four or five months there? Yeah, not nothing crazy at all. Honestly, we've had deals that took us, uh, I think we've done one deal that took us about a year to fill. Um, so, but we're going to talk about these numbers here in, in a sign-out deal. So it's such a low... Uh, risk, no liability, and, and going to be great profits here. So let's dive into that. So uh, yeah. at the signing with the buyer, how much did the buyer come to the table with? Yeah, so $23,696.37. Okay, and for those who are listening out there, this is what it includes. It's going to include your binder deposit, which is in there, which is roughly $1,000. It's going to include uh, the... Uh, down payment of roughly $20,000, uh, first month's rent, and what we consider our processing fee uh, for the attorney to have this person come sit in front of them and process them. So uh, that's, a, that's a fantastic number, especially on AO, but let's dive into it a little further because uh, I know you were working with Nick on this deal, and mm -hmm. I'm sure that there are other deposits coming um, along with this buyer. So what, uh, what do we have for other scheduled deposits? 
Yeah, so in total, the buyer was in a, is coming to the table with 51,000, and we span that over the next 18 months. So, so we had the 20,000 from the initial signing, and then uh, 10,000 will come on December 2020. Got it. So, all right. Uh, so in, in total, you say 51,000? Yeah, correct. Yep. Okay, which makes a ton of sense. You're almost at exactly 10% down. Uh, I know that's a, that's a number on which we like to get our buyers to, at least 10% and above, for the pure fact that it's easier for them to qualify for a loan in the future. So real important that we did that. And uh, just, so, um, just so I caught that again, so we got a uh, – so it's 23000 up front, and then you have a $10,000 uh, deposit in December. Yep. Say six k in June and another 15000 in December. Yep, that's – yep, that's how I would add up to that 51 there. So. Awesome. And without, without getting too far into it, how did you guys schedule or why did you guys decide to schedule them in December and June and then in December again? Yeah, well, Nick and I, I mean, Nick did a good amount of talking, but Nick and I uh, got in conversation with uh, the buyers, uh, created a game plan that they felt comfortable with, um, made sure it was uh, conservative uh, in some regard, just so that um, this type of buyer felt comfortable throughout the process of what they feel. Like they could pay, they could be putting down in certain times, and then we just based it out by six months, just um, based off of how the buyer was communicating with us and kind of our feel throughout that process. So, cool. It wasn't any particular reason why the December and um, and June were were correlated in there. Nothing to do with their bonuses or anything like that. It was just something that everyone was super comfortable with those dates. Yeah. Well, uh, the both both husband and wife are business owners. So it just kind of worked out just every six months that we handle things appropriately. So um, there was no bonuses tied in necessarily, just more of a comfort thing with these, with this couple. So. Awesome. Yep. All right. So let's, uh, let's dip back into the buyer deposit comes in uh, 23,000, which the first one's rent yours and the processing fee, you pay out your fee to the attorney and then you collect the balance. How much of the deposit uh, was the seller receiving? Yeah, so there's a little nuance here. Um, our, sp our split is going to be 75, 25% of that 30,000. Uh, the seller had uh, discussed some things with us that she would like to see a little bit more of the pie up front. So we, we provided 33% of the first 20,000, and then we'll give her remaining. So. So of the twenty of the thirty thousand split that we have, she was going to be seeing seventy five hundred dollars, um, but we gave her sixty six hundred of the twenty first twenty thousand, and then we'll give her nine hundred of the next ten thousand. Um, is how we handled that, just to help with her situation of moving uh, to Ohio and other things of that nature. So. Awesome. So what's the total? Uh, what is the total profit that you're going to allocate from this deal? Yeah, so it's going to be twenty two thousand five hundred plus the um, finder's deposit and first month's rent, which will total up to twenty six thousand one ninety six thirty seven. Okay, so just over twenty six thousand total. Um, that's a <laughs> Nathan. I know it's been a long time coming. Um, how are you feeling now? You get your first deal done. Feels good. Um, Feel like I know the whole process now not that I didn't have appropriate coaching and, and things I think it, one thing is being told what to what to go what the process is going to look like versus actually going through it uh, so going through it one time I, I feel like I'm going to be more comfortable when communicating uh, to uh, future buyers and sellers uh, down the road with this process too so um, very helpful in that regard awesome um if you could, as we kind of sign off here, Nathan, I know we have a, yeah. a ton of people watching this and are hoping to be in your position soon enough. So if you could, maybe to help them fast forward, just give one lear uh, learning lesson that you took away from this deal, and then uh, we'll dive into that later on in overtime. 
I think uh, something that I could improve on um, initially when starting with the program was uh, QLS, really honed in and dove into QLS, but also continuing to dive in and continuing to learn from, from that is something that I know that I need to do a better job at. So always just uh, improving my craft and um, like I said earlier, understanding the system or process now is going to help me immensely in the next deal. Um, but continuing to dive and learn into that, into QLS, it would, would have helped me a lot more in this specific space, especially since I was out of state with, uh, with, the, with the signing going on. So, Typical. You're another, another associate that likes to get these things signed when he's, when he's out of state. Right. <laughs> well, Okay, guys. Well, that's what you got. That's what everybody has for uh, Deal Structure Sunday this week. If you want more from Nathan on this deal, head on over to Smart Real Estate Coach Academy and fire this week's up Deal Structure Sunday Overtime. You can learn more about this series uh, and all the rest of our courses by going to smartrealestatecoachacademy.com.